Now, I absolutely adored the tits off the OnePlus 11 flagship phone last year, so I'm as happy as a puppy that's just discovered his own balls now that the OnePlus 12 is finally going global. You can expect quite a few upgrades here, including Qualcomm's mighty Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, pumping out incredible performance, along with a fresh new fourth generation Hasselblad camera. Loads of top tech packed into a gorgeous glass frame. So let's start with the OnePlus 12 unboxing, then I'm going to slap my SIM in there and through the magic of video editing, we'll skip forward in time about a week so I can deliver my in-depth review. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So what do you get in that box besides, of course, the OnePlus 12? Well, thankfully, OnePlus is still chucking its Super VOOC chargers in there. 100 watts of power, baby. And of course, you've got your regular bright red USB cable. And a whole load of paraphernalia, including some OnePlus stickers, a membership card for the Red Cable Club. Sounds like an executive bondage parlor, but sadly I think it's just like an online OnePlus fan club thing. And last up, the customary welcome letter from war great mate Pete, celebrating 10 years of OnePlus, which makes me feel like a very old git. All right, so that's all that. Time to slap my sim in the OnePlus 12 and then endure another week and a bit of existence and get back to you with that review. So let's begin with design. And one of the biggest, most controversial changes here on the OnePlus 12 is switching up that alert slider from the right edge over to the left. Those filthy mother f***s. And apparently this is thanks to a redesigned antenna which offers stronger connectivity when you're clutching the phone horizontally for gaming or streaming video. I certainly didn't have any issues on that front, even when things got proper sweaty in Call of Duty or Genshin Impact. However, what I did find was that I was constantly accidentally knocking that alert slider whenever I slipped the OnePlus 12 into my jeans and therefore accidentally sticking it from vibrate onto loud, which makes for a not particularly pleasant surprise when you're, for instance, in the cinema. And that never used to happen to me when the alert slider was over on the other side. So what I've done is I've got into the habit of turning the phone around before I put it into my pocket and that seems to have solved the issue. And with curved screens on smartphones seemingly about as popular as dysentery, I was surprised to see some sloppy edges here on the OnePlus 12. It's a reasonably subtle bit of curvature there, but I did find when I was clutching the OnePlus 12 rather tight, laid back in bed doing a bit of doom scrolling at 2am or whatever, occasionally that would balk the sensitivity a bit. My fingers and palm flab would just kind of intrude on that screen and f*** it all up. So yeah, I certainly would have preferred a flat screen finish similar to what you get on Samsung's Galaxy S24 series. Still, that skinny design means that the OnePlus 12 certainly isn't cumbersome to clutch. And meanwhile, around back, you've got a glass arse, which comes in three colours, black, white, or this gorgeous green effort, complete with a pattern finish that reminds me of my granddad's old bathroom tiles. Pensioners bog vibes aside, I really like the design here on the OnePlus 12, which according to OnePlus is inspired by the untamed beauty found in nature, where unbounded paths and infinite possibilities reign supreme. And if all of that sounds like a big bunch of marketing bollocks, that's basically because it is. And apparently it's also a convenient excuse for the OnePlus creative team to bugger off to New Zealand to stare at a bunch of rivers for, you know, inspiration. I mean, really, they should have just gone down the top's tiles. Would have saved them loads of time. And anyway, the OnePlus 12's arse end feels proper lush with a soft textured surface which defies expectation and also slightly aids the grip. Between that and the bloody huge camera bump which acts as a handy finger shelf, one-handed use really into troublesome despite the size of this thing. Oh, and the OnePlus 12 is also IP65 water and dust resistant, so not fully water resistant. It can cope with some serious moisture, but definitely do not go dropping it into a sink or a bath or anything like that, because it probably would not end well. And it is an aluminium frame here on the OnePlus 12's edge. No posh titanium shenanigans here, but it seems to be reasonably resistant to fingerprints and grime, despite the fact that it is a shiny surface. And you've got Gorilla Glass Victus protecting that display, which can still scratch up a wee bit if you're not too careful, but thankfully OnePlus has kindly chucked on a pre-installed screen protector. So hopefully should stay in good nick for months to come. Now, when you unlock the OnePlus 12 using that ever-reliable in-display fingerprint sensor, you'll be greeted with the latest, freshest OxygenOS 14, which gives Android a delightfully OnePlus-y vibe. 
And OnePlus already announced a wee while back that from 2023, they will be committed to four OS updates and five years of security patching on their biggest, flagshipiest phones. And Oxygen OS is still one of my favorite Android launches. It's smooth and stable in version 14, and it boasts all the usual customization options and nifty bonus features. So for instance, there's some cracking mental health stuff packed onto the OnePlus 12, which as a jittery alcoholic with severe imposter syndrome, I am a big fan of. For instance, Zen Space is still like a do not disturb deep cut, which grants you limited access to just a handful of apps that you specify fully customizable. And you've also got the excellent Overlax for when life really gets on your tits and you just need to unwind. Lots of soothing tunes and random white noises and other bits that just help to switch off your brain basically. And I'll bang on about some of those other Oxygen OS bits like the gaming modes later on. So yeah, don't you go clicking any of those tempting, much more professionally crafted tech videos which are right there on your screen. I can tell you have ironed them up already, aren't you? Please please stay. Now the OnePlus 12's display is yet another 6.7 inch OLED panel with Quad HD plus resolution like most other premium flagships. There's no HDR support shown in Netflix for me just yet but it is apparently Dolby Vision and HDR10 certified. And same as last year, a good bit of LTPO tech which scales from 1Hz all the way up to 120Hz. And this screen is bright enough to comfortably use even under the glare of the midday sun. And I know this because I actually buggered off out of the UK and went to a country with sun. America. I went to America. And those stereo speakers are unsurprisingly solid for a good bit of video streaming, but as usual, I wouldn't blast music through them. And of course, no, there isn't a headphone jack here on the OnePlus 12, but the Bluetooth streaming, absolutely flawless. And like most other recent flagships, the OnePlus 12 boasts a good bit of Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 action to keep everything running as smooth as possible. Well, my review model has a rather generous 16 gigs of RAM chucked in. I mean, that's more RAM than even your mum can handle. And believe me, she can take some serious RAM action. Gaming prowess is top notch as expected. Genshin Impact on the highest detail settings is handled beautifully, especially when you switch on the performance mode in the gaming toolbar. I did find that the phone got a wee bit toasty up near the top end after around 40 to 50-ish minutes of non-stop running away from big scary gribbly things that wanted to rip out some of my more sensitive squidgy bits and use them like juggling balls. But don't worry, the OnePlus 12 never got burny and I didn't see any disruption to that perfectly fluid frame rate. Now the OnePlus 12 boasts a great set of gaming tools as well which you can drag out at any point during your game like so. And it's absolutely stuffed to the armpits with great tools, some of which are courtesy of OnePlus, some of which are courtesy of that Snapdragon Adreno GPU. So you've got the usual performance modes to switch between, low power mode if you're just doing a bit of Fruit Ninja or whatever else, balanced mode and then the Pro Gamer mode which is definitely recommended for the likes of Genshin Impact. And tweak the screen refresh rate and the touch response. All the standard stuff like you can block calls and notifications. You can check the quality of your online connection, which is obviously very handy for the likes of Call of Duty, PUBG, anything where you need to stay online. You can fiddle with the touch sensitivity right here in touch optimization as well. So if your pokes and prods aren't quite being responsive enough, you can have a fiddle with that. You've also got the hyper response engine, which can adjust the refresh rate in real time. You've got the Hyper HDR feature to boost that dynamic range. You can also dive into GPU settings and tweak various graphical efforts there. You've also got an adaptive frame booster as well, which can't be turned on at the same time as that Hyper Response Engine. You've got Hyper Resolution if you want to make those visuals even more crispy. And as you can see, just absolutely bugger loads of stuff. And of course, good old Championship mode, which basically turns on pretty much every option going. Oh, and obviously not forgetting the slightly creepy voice changer. I've always fancied being an elegant lady. Now, somehow OnePlus has managed to cram a 5,400 mAh battery into the OnePlus 12. That's even more capacious than the one in the Samsung Galaxy S24 frickin' Ultra. And let me tell you, boy crikey, the battery life here is absolutely positively stiffy inducing. This thing is like the Duracell bunny. It just refuses to drop. Like I literally one day used it for 24 hours when traveling to the States and I still had juice in the tank when I eventually finally face planted my pillow. Even with heavy camera use and lots of audio streaming in the background, you will happily manage six to seven hours of screen on time with every charge. 
In fact, speaking of Samsung's Ultra phones, the OnePlus 12 is more than a match for them. So definitely any power users out there, get on it. And in fact, when it comes to powering the battery back up again, the OnePlus 12 is a clear winner in that particular battle because you've got 100 watt wide charging as well as Hazard 50 watt wireless charging. And you've got all the usual battery health shenanigans if you do plug it in at night, but honestly, just bung a cable in it for 20, 30 minutes in the morning. That should give you all the juice you need. Now let's finish up this OnePlus 12 review with a squint at the optics, headed up by a 50 meg fourth generation Hasselblad camera. And accompanying this primary shooter is a 48 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, and they've also got a fresh new 64 megapixel periscope zoom with up to three times optical zoom. And at times, I've got to say, when using the camera, those sloped edges have again impeded my use of this phone. Occasionally, if I'm gripping the phone rather tight, I'll go to tap that shutter button and just nothing will happen. It'll be completely unresponsive. But thankfully, no real gripes when it comes to the picture quality. I really bloody love the natural looking results captured by the OnePlus 12. In that auto mode with the default settings, you should be more than happy with your photo collection. There's no aggressive color boosting, sharpening, or other heavy processing on shore. What you see in real life is generally what you get in your gallery, as long as you don't piss about and try to shoot into the sun or anything. And even so, this clever wee sword can cope with full-on contrast, with only light saturation at times. It's also rare to see any kind of light flaring or other buggery when the sun is working against you. Even in more ambient light, those tones only occasionally stray into warmer territory. The OnePlus 12 is once again a dependable snapper churning out crispy pics. And at night time, aye, there's no steep drop off in visual clarity or accuracy. Expect bright shots with next to zero noise unless we're talking proper pitch black situations. And that's with a fast shutter action too. And that portrait action as cracking as ever. You've got a choice of one times, two times or three times zoom for your portraits. Of course, full control over the bokeh action. Now, if you zoom in using the fresh telephoto lens, the results are again superb. That zoom actually maxes out at 120 times here. It kind of feels like OnePlus beating its chest and waving its willy right at Samsung. That's right, bitch, it's 20 times better. And in truth, photo quality remains surprisingly decent until you start to hit higher double digits, at which point everything kind of looks like a water painting done by a drunk toddler. But considering there's no 5 times or 10 times zoom lens here, it's certainly clever stuff. And it's even rather effective in the evenings. As for that ultra wide shooter, well this is one of the better efforts I've tested on any smartphone recently. Mostly stepping in line with that primary shooter, although in low light it can fall down a bit. And when it comes to shooting home movies, well no worries, you can capture footage at 8K resolution at 24 frames per second. Although I tended to use the OnePlus 12 at 4K level because I don't have an 8K telly. And the video and audio quality is respectably good, more than good enough for capturing those precious family moments. Even at night, you'll get fairly bright, sharp visuals rather than a murky, noisy mess. Digital stabilization is a little bit aggressive at that 4K level, so panning isn't as smooth as I would like. It is a wee bit stop-start at times, but you know, at least the view doesn't bob about the place as you walk. Zooming is relatively smooth, thankfully, with transitions that aren't too terrible as you flip from one sensor to the next. Although that change to the ultra wide angle shooter is quite obvious at times, especially when the lighting is softer. And oh yes, before I forget, there is a 32 megapixel selfie shooter slapped on the front end. And this turned out some good looking pics too, or as good looking as anything could possibly be featuring my haggard hair free head. Yeah, my pallid complexion, perfectly captured. Those portrait smarts again work well. So that right there, my lovelies, is my full OnePlus 12 review after using it as my full-time smartphone for just over a week. And you know, I absolutely love the tits off the older OnePlus 11. And the OnePlus 12 is a gentle evolution in quite a few areas. It doesn't do anything particularly special apart from perhaps the battery life, which is right up there with the very tippy toppiest best Android smartphones like the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. But you know, everything it does do, it does rather bloody well. So that's what I reckon anyway. It'd be great to hear your thoughts on the OnePlus 12. Are you tempted to get one ordered in? Definitely let us know down in the comments below. Please do check out my other reviews of the latest 2024 flagship phones. I almost said three there. That's how scarily, terrifyingly fast time has flown through our fingers. Uh, what was I bagging up? Please do pong subscribe, ding that notifications bell, all that usual YouTube bollocks, and have yourselves a bloody wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.